I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons, my Biblio Spran, Biblio Howlers, and Biblio Mansers. Thank you so much for supporting my hobby and passion even more. It means so much to me. Hi everyone, Patrick here. Welcome to the last video of the year 2022. Today's video will be about my yearly wrap up. Last year, at the end of last year, I posted this kind of video as the last video I posted in the year 2021. And I have decided to make this an annual video on my channel. And for now, I will start naming this section, this annual video on my channel, Patrick's Choice Awards. Now, let me know what you think about that name. Yes, it is inspired by People's Choice Awards, and I thought it's, it's kind of a good name, right, to name it a Patrick's Choice Awards. So basically, I will be dividing all the best books I've read this year and also the best books I acquired this year into categories. If you have been following my channel since the beginning of this year, then I think you will probably know which books belongs to which category. But on top of that, I will also be talking about other topics. Other topics I love, such as TV shows, movies, manga, and also video games. I love every one of them, but well, this channel is dedicated to fantasy, sci-fi, and historical fiction novel, mostly fantasy as probably many of you know already. But at the very least, on this last video of the year, on top of books, I would love to talk about all other passions that I love as well. In total, there are more than 20 categories here, and the first half of this video will be dedicated to novels, both traditionally published and self-published combined immediately. I've already covered the best and the most disappointing novels I've read this year in a separated, dedicated video, so I will be skipping those two categories. After I'm done talking about novels, I will be talking about all the best and most disappointing manga, TV show, anime, movies, and also, lastly, video games. This is a yearly wrap up of every storytelling escapism I consumed this year. So yeah, let the Patrick's Choice Awards begin. And who knows, maybe, maybe someday, if this channel becomes super successful, Maybe I can commission a real award to give to every winner. But for now, a virtual award and a clap from me will have to do. <laughs> so yeah, let's begin. So the first category is the most surprisingly good novels I've read this year. As the title says, I didn't expect that I would end up loving these novels very much, but I did. And these books are Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. I hate it abruted, but I totally love Spinning Silver. And of course, The Fires of Heaven and also Lords of Chaos by Robert Jordan, the fifth and the sixth book in the Wheel of Time series. If you have been following my channel, then you will know that I was super, super disappointed with The Shadow Rising and it stopped me from continuing with the series for two years. Fortunately, I end up continuing with the Wheel of Time series this year and I really, really love The Fires of Heaven and Lord of Chaos, with Lord of Chaos being somehow one of the best books that I read this year. So yeah, these three books are my pick for the first category. And for the second category, it will be about my favorite novellas that I read in the year 2022. And for this one, I have talked about this in my previous video, the top 15 or 19 books that I read in the year 2022. And yes, I talk about my favorite novellas there as well. So I will just repeat that. Here, these two are The Exile by Ryan Cahill and also The Jet Setter of Jan Lun by Fonda Lee. Love these two books so much, they are easily the best novella that I read this year. And moving on to the next category, it will be about the best short story. Now, I haven't talked much about short story this year, but at the end of this year, uh, precisely yesterday, I just read this short story by Zach Argal. It is titled five silver rings and I am very impressed with this one. I didn't expect that I would love this short story. Generally speaking, short stories is the format that I rarely click with, but based on my experience with Ken Lee's books, never say never to them. The Five Silver Rings by Zach Argal is another example. I will make sure to read uh, his main trilogy as soon as possible, the Threadlight Trilogy. Let's move on to the next category. It is the best one of standalone that I read this year, and it is Swan Song by Robert McCammon. Once again, Robert McCammon surprised me with his talent in storytelling. Both Swan Song and Boy's Life are in my list of favorite novels and favorite standalone novels and I look forward to reading more books by Robert McCammon as soon as possible. Probably the next one will be a series. If I'm not mistaken, the title of the series is Matthew Corbett. And moving on to the sixth category on today's video, it will be about best reread of the year. Now, I reread a lot of books and I have to say, if I have to choose one, my choice would be The Crown Conspiracy by Michael J. Sullivan. Uh, the first book in the Theft of Swords Omnibus or the first book in the Ryria Revelations. I gave The Crown Conspiracy on my first read 
I think it was a 2 out of 5 stars. I was immensely disappointed with the crown's conspiracy. But on my reread, after reading through the Raria revelations and also finishing the Raria chronicles as well, my connection with Royce and Hadrian and also the characters of the Raria books are just, well, I practically consider them as people I really know now. And because of that, reading a crown conspiracy, the reading experience was improved significantly. And yes, this is the best reread of this year for me. We only have seven categories left in the topic for novels. And just as a warning, you will hear the name Gorav Mohanty and Kenley repeated a lot here. I will try to be brief with every one of them. So moving on to the next one, the category for the best debut will have to go to Sons of Darkness by Gorav Mohanty. It is easily the best fantasy debut that I've read this year. And immediately moving on to the next category, best new author that I've read this year. And for this one, I will have to choose two. Philip C. Quintrell, the author behind the Echo Saga. I mean, I'm reading nine books by him uh, this year, and that's that's a lot of books from a single author within a year. And I pretty much enjoy almost every one of them, with a few of them being included in my list of favorite books. And the other best new author for me this year, well, it will have to be, again, Gaurav Mohanty. Okay, I will only repeat the name Gaurav Mohanty once more, and that is in the next category. And it is for the category, the best first book of a series I've read this year. I will choose two books here, and they are, as I said, Sons of Darkness by Gaurav Mohanty, and also The Grace of Kings by Ken Liu. I think The Grace of Kings is one of the most criminally underrated novel that I've read. Looking at the average rating on Goodreads, it actually shocked me that the number of ratings is, well, relatively that low. But for me, it was one of my favorite first book of a series that I've read. And now let's talk about the next category, and it is the best sequel that is not the final book of a series. And of course, I will choose my book of the year, The Wall of Storms by Ken Liu. Easily one of the best sequels that I've read, a true masterpiece of an epic fantasy novel, and the best second book of a series I've read since Words of Radiance by Brendan Sanderson. Moving on to the next one, it will be about the best conclusions I've read this year, the best conclusion to a series. And of course, my number one pick would have to be Speaking Bones by Ken Liu, but I will also mention two other amazing concluding volumes I've read this year, and they are The Lost Metal by Brendan Sanderson and The Lonesome Crown by Brian Lee Durfee. These two, along with Speaking Bones, are some of my most anticipated books of this year, and they all exceeded, or at least met my expectations. We're almost done with giving the categories for novels, and the next one is about the best series. And yeah, I've talked about this already in uh, my best books video, and the best series that I read this year. If you have been following my channel this year, then I am sure that you will know the answer for this, and yes. It is The Dandelion Dynasty by Ken Liu. It is truly one of the best series that I've read in my life. I love it so much, everything about it just click with me. And now we're at the final category for the topic of novels, and it's time to talk about the most gorgeous physical books that I got this year. This year, honestly, I actually acquired more than 200 physical books. It is by far the most I ever acquired books within a single year out of every year of my life. I have never acquired books this much within a single year before. And I'm truly thankful to every friends, patrons, sub-published fantasy authors, and traditional publishers who send me books. I am truly thankful. And that's why it is also difficult for me to choose because there are a lot of gorgeous books here. And it is difficult for me to choose which one are the most gorgeous. But with that in mind, I have made my decision, I'm going to choose five traditionally published books and also five self-published fantasy books here. Choosing just one or two isn't enough. I'm going to choose five each. And that's difficult already. Now, let's start from the traditionally published books first. And the first four are part of a set, and they are The Way of Kings, Warbreaker, Alley of Law, and Shadow of Self, all of them Dragonsteel Leatherbound Edition. I cannot believe that within a single year, I actually acquired these four luxurious leather-bound edition. They are some of my most coveted special edition. And I just want to say thank you so much to Jen and also Andrew for giving me The Way of Kings, Alley of Law, and Shadows of Self Dragonsteel edition. And the last most gorgeous and stunning traditionally published book I got this year, of course, it will have to be a Game of Thrones Folio Society edition. Just like the Dragon Seal edition that I just mentioned, Game of Thrones and practically the entirety of A Song of Ice and Fire Folio Society edition, they are all some of my most coveted special editions, and well, acquiring them felt like a dream come true. Seriously, and thank you so much to Adi Raven for giving me a Game of Thrones Folio Society edition. I still have four books in the series to collect, 
but I will try my best to collect them slowly. For now, I am truly satisfied beyond words with the Dragon Seal Leather Bound Edition I got and also this one. Now let's talk about the 5 most gorgeous self-published fantasy books I got this year. And yeah, they are all gorgeous. Look at this. The first one is The King Must Fall by Grimdark Magazine. This is an anthology of Grimdark stories by 19 authors. And yes, this edition is gorgeous. And after that, my pick for the next most beautiful self-published fantasy book I got is uh, Soul by J. Quee Davis and K. Grierson. This one is again beautiful. Every interior artwork is done by the authors themselves and they are fully colored. Amazing stuff, really. And after Soul, my next pick is The Written Illustrated Edition by Ben Gelly. And yes, this one is ultra stunning. The Written Illustrated Edition already looked this good. I cannot wait to see what Ben Gelly has to offer for the second book, Pal Kings. My fourth pick in the self-published fantasy section is The Purple Prince by Sebastian Menkes. I love this hardcover and I first heard about this book through Jimmy Nuts or the Fantasy Network review and I will certainly read this one next year. On top of this beautiful hardcover which have plenty of interior artworks, I also got a printed map and some printed art from the author and yes, I am truly thankful for this. And lastly, my pick for the most beautiful self fantasy book I got this year is Conspiracy by AC Cobble. I just love this cover art and this hardcover so much. It is so beautiful. I mean the design by Sean, uh, Sean King looks so neat and the cover art by Daniel Kamarudin looks incredible. And additionally, we also have plenty of interior artworks by the legendary self-published fantasy artist uh, Felix Ortiz. This is the first book in the War Heights series and I'm curious to find out how the second book will be able to top this one. This already looks so good in my opinion. So I don't know if you know about this but pretty much these five self-published fantasy books that I chose, all of them are published through Kickstarter campaign and I'm truly glad that I own every one of them. Thank you so much really to the authors who sent me this Kickstarter campaign books. So that's the end of Patrick's Choice Awards for the topic of novels. Now let's talk about various other topics. Well, some of these aren't awards because I will be talking about some of the most disappointing stuff too. And the first one will be about the most disappointing manga I read this year and I have two for this one. The first one is Dr. Stone by Richiro Inagaki. Now this one isn't actually bad but after finishing it, I think everything about it just felt okay. It's fun, but nothing special about it. And the second most disappointing manga series I read this year, unfortunately, will have to be Golden Kamui by Satoru Noda. But for this one, to be fair, I think I was just in a completely wrong reading mood for it. I totally expect that Golden Kamui would be an epic fantasy manga series, but it's not. It is a very detailed hysterical fiction manga series. So probably one day I will try to tackle it again, but for now, I will have to stop reading Golden Kamui after the first three volumes because it just didn't capture my interest enough. As for the topic of best manga, I will have to divide this into two categories and they are best ongoing manga and also best new manga to me. Best ongoing manga means that I'm already in the middle of reading this manga series and for this one, I'm going to choose the first one without a shadow of the doubt is One Piece by Eiichiro Oda. I've been reading One Piece for more than I think two decades now, so long. It is practically a part of my life now. This year, I've decided to reread One Piece from the beginning of Wano arc until the end and it is one of the greatest experience of reading that I've had. It's just absolutely amazing and it proved once again why Eiichiro Oda is still one of the best storytellers out of every medium. And for the second one, my pick will go to Blue Lock. I'm still in the middle of reading this series. Blue Lock has become one of my favorite sports manga and I think I will have a blast reading this one up to the end of the series. I don't know when that will happen, but for now, I just love Blue Lock very much. The artwork definitely is a huge part of why I love Blue Lock, but it's just super stunning. And speaking of stunning artwork, the next category will be about best new manga to me. This is the first time I'm reading this manga this year and it will be a manga series that I read in December and that is Witch Hat Atelier by Kamome Shirahama. I didn't expect that I would love this manga series this much but it's incredible. I first found out about Witch Hat Atelier through this YouTube video that I found being recommended to me. I think the YouTube channel is aligned in motion. I will leave the link in the description down below but that video convinced me to buy the entire Witch Hat Atelier immediately and I'm not regretting it 
one bit it is one of the best manga series right now for me the artwork is beautiful and the usage of panel is just so brilliant Kamome Shirahama is such a great artist and storyteller I love the heart magic system in this manga series as well and the characters are all easy to get attached to so that's the end for the topic of manga now let's talk about anime the most disappointing anime I watched this year is Musoku Tensei I just, I think it is time to admit that Isekai anime, the most popular and highly praised one, are just not for me. I pretty much dislike almost everything about Mushoku Tensei. And when people praise ReZero, I tried watching that and I was disappointed with that too. I think it is just, it is time to admit that Isekai is just probably not for me. Moving on to the next category, it is time to talk about the best anime that I watched this year. There are two subcategories to this one, best anime movies and also best anime TV show. For best anime movie, I will choose Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. It is amazing, the animation just completely blew my mind. It is one of the best anime movie that I've watched in my life and I have watched a lot. A lot of anime movies. As for the best anime show I watched this year, I cannot choose just one. I have a lot and they are Demon Slayer Season 2, Bleach Thousand Year Blood War, which is a bit of a shock to me because I am so disappointed with the ending of the manga for Bleach. But as far as anime adaptation goes, I think this one just nailed everything so well. And then Shingeki no Kyojin Final Season Part 2 or Attack on Titan Final Season Part 2. And finally an anime that I cannot believe took me this long to watch and it is Violet Evergarden. This one is just a beautiful and heartwarming and also emotional slice of life with some of the most beautiful animations that I've seen and the music are some of my favorites. I listen to them all the time even when I'm writing reviews. We only have three topics left and they are TV shows, movies, and video games. And for the topics of TV show, the most disappointing TV show I watched this year, it is easily Rings of Power. It is a beauty with no substance. Visually, it is impressive. The music, I have nothing to complain about. But everything else, I have issues with them. I just, well, if I end up talking and ranting about the Rings of Power, it would require another video. But yeah, suffice to say that it is the most disappointing TV show I watched this year. On the other hand, for the category of the best TV show, I will choose House of the Dragon season one and also the fourth season of Stranger Things. Not gonna lie, for these two, initially I had my apprehension. I thought the ending of the third season of Stranger Things was incredibly satisfying enough already and I thought it would feel forced to include another season. But somehow, the fourth season of Stranger Things end up being probably one of my favorites ever since the first season of Stranger Things. And House of the Dragon, after the super disappointing end of the TV show Game of Thrones, of course I was apprehensive about House of the Dragon at first. But right from the first two episodes, all the doubt I had were gone and the season just kept getting better and better with each episode. I think it is a return to the glory days of Game of Thrones and I am so looking forward to watching the next season. I think it is even better than the book Fire and Blood. Now let's move on to the topic of movies. This is a bit difficult for me because somehow this year I watched so many amazing movies. In fact, because I watched so many amazing movies, I can only choose one for the next category of the most disappointing movie that I watch. And I don't know whether this is an unpopular opinion or not, but I will choose The Northman. Uh, this one is just too bizarre for me. It reminded me of watching The Green Knight uh, last year, and that one also was one of the most disappointing movies that I've watched. I just didn't get what is so appealing about both The Green Knight and The Northman. Well, for The Northman, we have Alexander Skarsgård, and probably that's a good reason to watch the movie already because he is awesome and the actions he portrayed in The Northman is pretty good. It's pretty greedy and terrifying, but other than that, everything about it is just too bizarre for me. On the other hand, for the topic of best movies, I will have to choose five. I cannot decide which one I love most between these five, and they are the Batman, Robert Pattinson completely surprised me. I didn't expect that he would be this good at portraying Batman. And then Avatar The Way of Water, visually one of the best, maybe even the best movie that I watched on cinema and the wait was worth it. And my next pick is Elvis. Austin Butler just killed it in this movie. His performance is just phenomenal. I loved it so much and I love the movie as well. And then another one of my pick is Everything Everywhere All At Once. I just watched this for the first time this year. I don't know whether this one is actually released last year or not, but yeah, I just watched this one uh, this year. This one is bizarre as well and at first I thought I wasn't going to like that, but 
you know what after i reached the end it was just so emotional and the meaning behind the movie is just unforgettable i love michelle Yeoh, and yeah this movie is brilliant and finally my last pick is top gun maverick i watched this on the cinema and i love every moment of watching this movie i think top gun maverick is far and above better than the first top gun and i know that's probably not saying a lot for me anyway because the first top gun is so outdated now but Top Gun Maverick just showed that CGI is not everything in the movie, okay? If you haven't watched Top Gun Maverick yet, make sure to fix that as soon as possible. It is an amazing movie. And now we finally arrive at the last topic of Patrick's Choice Awards, and it is video game. Now this is probably not saying a lot because I actually only played two video games uh, this year and one I didn't even finish. And so that one will have to be the most disappointing video game of this year, and that is Last of Us to I cannot believe I'm mentioning this as my most disappointing game but this game is the reason why I'm not playing any other game this year because I still haven't finished it it has been a year almost a year I think I started this game all the way back in February or March or maybe even January I cannot remember and now we're at the end of the year and I think I'm only halfway through the game it's just so boring so boring and i have no idea whether i will be able to finish this game or not and now let's move on to the final category of today's video and that is the best video game i played of course it will have to be Elden Ring. I am a huge Soulsborne and Sekiro fans and also Elden Ring fans. Demon Souls, Dark Souls Trilogy, Bloodborne, Sekiro and also Elden Ring. I absolutely love every single one of them and Elden Ring actually somehow reminded me why I love playing video games again at the current stage I'm in it will take a very special and amazing video game to actually make me stop reading books for a while in favor of playing video games and that is exactly what has been achieved by Elden Ring every moment I'm not playing this game I kept on thinking about it and yes I love every moment of playing Elden Ring it is the game of the year for me and i think if this year i actually played other video games other than these two i still would end up probably choosing elden ring the only other contender i know that will probably had a great fight against elden ring is the new god of war god of war ragnarok and i haven't played that so i cannot make my decision on this yet i will play god of war ragnarok in 2023 but for now Elden Ring is hands down my favorite game of the year. So yeah, that's it for today's video. That's also the end of the last video of 2022 and the end of Patrick's Choice Award for this year. Thank you so much to all of you who keep watching my videos this year. Thank you so much for the support, really. I can't believe that it actually has been two years since I started my channel and now there are more than 21,000 subscribers sub to my channel. It is amazing. Seriously, amazing. I cannot thank you enough and i hope all of you who watch my video this year will continue to watch my videos next year as well and most importantly get something beneficial out of them i will try my best to keep on improving my channel and definitely recommending great books again next year do let me know what you think about patrick's choice awards this year and let me know how your year goes as always thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support i will see you again next year bye bye lastly i want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me